What's up, everyone? I'm John with Redenso. I'm Lindy. I'm the Chief Sales Officer here at Redenso. And today we're going to talk about data collection. Data. Data, 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 data. collection. <clears throat> anyway, it's the process where we go out into the field, identify these false alerts, bring our equipment, and then record them so we can feed them to Ray and have her train them out and ignore them. It seems really easy. It's not. <laughs> if it was so easy, everyone else would do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about like stationary false alerts that you guys know and love, like the Kroger and the Walgreens of the world. And then also we're going to talk about um, uh, other consistent waves. Yeah, well, mostly all stationary, but some are modulated, some are CW. But you made a good point about difficulty earlier, where you said it is so easy. Well, it's actually kind of that easy for mobile BSMs, like uh, like on a Cadillac or Mazda, because we can actually go to that car's location, walk up two feet away from it with our equipment, and record it. Yeah. Um, or just bring it, yeah, bring it to the lab. Bring it to our lab. Collect data and exactly. Roll. Yeah. But there is a much more difficult kind of stationary false that's not a door opener. We can also walk up to door openers that started appearing um, on highways all over, uh, I think five or six states now, so I can't really say all over America. But it's, it's spreading, and this one's hard. Why is it hard? Um, <clears throat> so you think about, you know, you talked about like being able to bring in a vehicle into the lab, collect data on it, and on your merry way. This is um, a sign. It's not accessible. Yeah, that is not accessible to us. We literally have to put ourselves in, in peril <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to collect this data. And that's what's been really, really mm -hmm. challenging about it. And we actually have one here in town. Um, that we uh, are going to take a look at. and They're we, installing these things all over the place in Cincinnati. Yeah, like how many have popped up literally just in Cincinnati in the last year? I think there's at least 10 or 15 of them yeah. um, in like a 15 mile And stretch. it doesn't matter what radar detector you're using, yep. whether it's Uniden or Escort or you know K40 or you know Redenzo, you name it, it's all, they're all false alerts. So we really kind of set out to find out why. Why is it? And then, so let's problem solve it. So one thing cool about this video is that we made the decision beforehand that we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know yeah. what the signal is going to look like. We don't know if we're going to succeed or fail. But we wanted to show you uh, like a problem solving process. This is real yeah. engineering that you're going to see. And uh, <coughs> it's, I, I think sometimes the, the process is just as interesting as the result. Um, we've never looked at the sensor before. So we're going to get a FPGA Rob, as Mindy calls him, <laughs> and uh, our other engineers out in the field with me and, and go take a look. Yeah, I dig so, it. Let's do it. Rock and roll. Let's go for a drive. Today, we're going to be getting outside and away from Redenso HQ, the mothership, and we'll be taking you along on a real-life, Black Ops-style engineering mission. K-band false alerts are everywhere these days, whether it's from door openers or mobile BSM systems from cars. But there's a new type of false alert that's spreading across highways all over America. And today, what we're going to be doing is taking one of these, a software-defined radio, a tool that helps us actually see what radar looks like, out into the field to get a better idea of what we're dealing with with these runway radar sensors. You'll see here in a second as we approach two signs, one on each side of the road. You're looking at the back of these runway signs, and each sign contains a K-band radar emitter. These signs are a good idea in theory, because when a car gets on the highway in the wrong direction, it breaks the beam of the radar, and then it instantly alerts the police. The problem from our standpoint is that those signals emitted are in K-band, and these cause false alerts from all radar detectors. Now, to collect these signals so Thea and Ray, our artificial intelligence, can train on them, we built a giant radar detector spread out on this copper board. At least, we did have one before I blew it up by plugging in power the wrong way. Here's me fixing it before we could head out into the field and actually have some fun. This is literally a radar detector. It's a super heterodyne receiver, just like your Uniden or Redenso radar detector is. And it all starts with this guy, the signal generator, or LO, local oscillator in your detector. That takes a high frequency signal and sends it to this mixer. The mixer's job is to take the signal that we generate along with KA band or K band signal which comes into this port, mix them together, and convert them to a lower frequency, which passes through these filters, through this amplifier, and into our software-defined radio. When we plug this into our computer, we can see everything, what a BSM or a CW radar signal actually looks like. So that looks really cool. Where are we going? It's a good question. 
Uh, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. It is a classified facility. A lot of no, paperwork to fill it's out. It's not really classified, but we can't tell you for real reasons. We have friends in high places that know people that do things. Exactly. So we only have two choices when it comes to collecting data from these wrong way sensors. We could either get in our car and drive the wrong way, block traffic, and sit there recording it, or we could leverage our connections, our friends in high places, to actually get into one of these facilities. So we know somebody who warehouses these things and installs them. Um, so we're heading down to that facility at an undisclosed location where we'll be able to get our, our hands on these things, get up close and personal with one of them, really see how it works, what makes it tick. And I think what's really cool about it is you get to see <clears throat> like the actual like behind the scenes of how this all works, right? Yep. Like we're gonna we bring our test set, right? We're gonna bring our whole mobile laboratory down and set yeah. it up. And that should be easy, right? And <clears throat> you guys will get to see the team in action. Yeah. So, we packed our gear into these Milwaukee Packout containers, which I'm a huge fan of, by the way, and brought them down to the facility. If you're wondering what type of gear you need to have a mobile RF lab, here's a good start. You're gonna need a spectrum analyzer that can go to 40 gigahertz, like this Keysight N903A, which can run over $100,000. For input into the PC, we use this Edis N321 software-defined radio, which runs about 15 grand. Then, of course, you have our K-band test set, which we use as the front end to get input into the Edis radio. This, combined with the K-band horn, is another few thousand dollars, but who's counting? Once the gear was set up, we brought up Phosphor, our trusty program that we use to view the RF spectrum. There was just one problem though, we weren't seeing any radar. All right, so you guys saw us. We're now in the office. We have our uh, mobile lab set up with the fancy spectrum analyzer and, and uh, our Edis so software-defined radios. But the first thing we do have to figure out how to do is get power to this thing. These are designed to be installed on the side of the road, and they have either solar power or AC power. Uh, so we're going to let our, our engineer loose on it and, and see what he can do. Cool. Temper alert. <laughs> It's kind of worrying. Do you think it's a good idea? Uh, so yeah. what frequency do we think? Yeah. Is that that should be on, right? Mm -hmm. I wonder. Yeah. So I've used uh, Wavetronics as a competitor of theirs, and theirs do not. As soon as you have power, they start going, and I confirm that with a factory rep. Okay. I would assume this would be the same, but it is a different brand, so it's possible that it's not. Yeah, DC. I think we can do the other side. It popped it up in the search. Cool. Okay, well, I, yeah, I saw that just one. There's no way this thing's set for 154. There's no way it's power supply supposed to be 154 on the thing. I would expect it to pull at least a half amp. I think that there inside of that thing is a definitely a gate, right? So how many wires were on the sensor lead? On the transmit head lead? It's got four. It's got power and then a uh, signal, I think. I wonder if it's sending out an analog quantity or if it's sending out a digital quantity. I would and the ADC is, bet a lot of money, it's a digital I would bet you're right. I wonder if it's a raw ADC stream. I wonder if you want to, do we want to power that with 13 points? We've got the FCC ID, we can look up the... I was gonna say. Let's do that. Let's look at the FCC ID. And then let's power it. Let's power the sensor. So as it turns out, we have it powered up. However, nothing is appearing on our radar scope at all. The story of my life. Yeah. You have no idea how, how many hours I have wasted knowing there's a signal there and trying to find it. Um, what's frustrating about this is that we verified with the multimeter, um, as you saw in the, the previous shot, that the, the main cabinet has power. These things are separated into to two parts, the radar antenna and then the CPU. <coughs> it's just like a Rodenso RCM, where you have the CPU separate yeah. from the antenna. So the CPU has power, but it's not turning on the radar head. Why no signal? Yeah, it's, it's got to be a software thing. Yeah. Um, so the logical thing to do is Pretend we bought it on eBay. And call and tech support? Call tech support, <laughs> yeah. So let's do it. Thank you for calling traffic consultant. Please listen carefully. There's many options to have recently. So he, he knows yeah. what the deal is. Please press 1. For technical assistance, please press 2. So thanks to your help, we got radar coming out of this thing. We can see it in K band. Um, it appears to be emitting a it appears to be emitting a CW signal. We were wondering if there was a serial command that we could send to it that would kick it into the modulation mode. Mm, not that I am aware of. So after talking to the nice gentleman on tech support, 
we uh, came to the understanding that they actually are, uh, all signs are not created equal. These wrong way signs actually are kind of two different parts, so to speak. Um, there's the master, which is the main wrong, one, uh, wrong way sign, and then they will, there will be three collaborators that work in conjunction with the master, and obviously the master says to do something, the collaborators obey. Yeah, and this, this presented a problem because when the tech support gentleman suggested that we just apply power directly to the radar receiver. Hopefully there's not some gnarly voltage in it, blows this thing out. And bypass the CPU, yeah, we could see a signal, we got it up and running. But it's CW, it's not what we expected. Alright, I think it's transmitting. Hey, what's that? So I did notice in the manual that it said it could be programmed for uh, CW mode or modulated. Let's see what it's so this will be interesting to see. It's modulated. Oh, maybe it's not very modulated. No, it's not modulated. Yeah, you say hello. We can check the serial port too. Yeah, we do. Right there. There it is. Twenty-four point one one two. 24.112, that's low. Should we unplug it to see if it's still there? It's, the manual said it's 24.6, uh, I think. Well, it, there might be a lot going on there, I'm not saying. Yeah, who, you want, I'll kill it. Go for it. Gone. Yeah, that's definitely it. These things, they state in their spec sheet that they're FMCW, or frequency modulated. Um, now, hmm. what we think is happening is what Mindy said, where that master box tells the other ones what to do. We're just powering on a collaborator. Not without, a master. Exactly, without the master there. Mm -hmm. So it's basically putting out a test tone. It's waiting to hear from the other collaborators what to do. And the reason that they do this is to prevent um, false alerts on their system. So mm -hmm. these things actually will detect a car going the wrong way not just flash a light, but it will call the police officers. They have cellular reception. And that's a great idea. Crazy. It can save a life. I mean, yeah. if, if somebody get notified um, immediately when it happens, the police can respond quicker. Yeah. But that's why they have uh, three or four of these signs. So the car has to pass <laughs> one, pass another, pass another. Checks and balances. E exactly. <coughs> yeah, makes so. sense. So we've established that we don't think this thing's going to do anything until it gets commands from the master. As frustrating as it is, uh, kind of made us coming down to this facility a, a little bit anticlimactic. But um, these things operate wirelessly. Not really anticlimactic well, for today's purposes. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a good point. We're learning things, yeah. and every time and there's no such thing as bad information. Um, I'll take any bit of information that I can get, and we can use it. But if this thing doesn't work um, without getting commands, they do uh, communicate wirelessly. So they're two like antenna to, to antenna. Exactly, okay. point to point, 2.4 gigahertz communications. Luckily, because we have software-defined radios, they're not just limited to radar. So we thought we'd get clever, drive to one of these uh, wrong way sensors out in the field, and then kind of sniff their protocol. We can listen to the packets coming in. I'm trying to imagine you guys standing on the side of the road with your guys' test set, it which is... It was raining. <laughs> um, but we literally tried to crack the protocol. Our logic was if we could see, if we could record a real master on the side of a road sending the commands to the collaborator yeah. units, we could then play back and make ours actually talk as well. Uh, so we, we did that and we could actually, we cracked the protocol. We could see commands being sent and we could read messages being sent. Here we go. Is that you are? Let's take a look. Decoder protocol to add in the analyzer. It's kind of the you are. It's yeah, you said that you got like the build date of the sign and like yes. that's really cool. But, but we don't <laughs> have enough sensitivity on our test set um, to, to get what we needed. We couldn't get any useful commands, unfortunately. So we'll see where that leaves us. This is Rob. How's Rob doing? So good. Just be, uh, be Rob. I don't, you don't want your customers to see that. We're trying to sell a product. No, I mean, where I just whisper like math into my computer and then storm around the office and like stare out the window rubbing my temples. <laughs> Rob's doing funny. Um, so things didn't go as planned. Welcome to engineering. <laughs> Welcome to Redento. Just throw the towel in, yeah. call it a day. Um, no, that's not how we I'm, roll. I'm going to go have a drink and it's just, I'm done. This isn't but, tea. Um, but it, in reality, it's. As I said, no information is bad information. Yeah. But the cool thing is we know now what we need to do to solve this mystery. Yeah. This is just a sensitivity problem on our test set. 
um, we can't get close enough to these things, the ones that are actually on the wrong way ramps, to get useful radar recordings out of them. Unless you're actually going wrong way on a wrong way. E exactly. Okay. And um, to, to solve that, we simply ordered an LNA that we're going to put into our test set. Right now, Thea is way more sensitive than our test set, but... Uh, an this, LNA will definitely yeah, allow we're us adding to a, It's $1,700 <coughs> for one amplifier, and we're going to put that in there, and I should be able to probably sit right here and aim the antenna and collect everything <laughs> without even leaving the chair. Don't tell Mama it was $1,700. So, yeah. She'll be mad. So when that comes in, um, we'll let you guys know. We'll get it installed, and then we'll do a follow-up video and see if we can crack the, the mystery of what type of signal do these things emit that are false alerting all radar detectors. Yeah. If you've got a detector and you're driving on I-71 near Cincinnati, you're getting a false alert to these things. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that being said, if you guys haven't done it yet, make sure you hit subscribe and like our video and stay and tuned. And enable notifications. Yes. As somebody in the office always yells at me that I have to say that in every video. So. Um, we appreciate your support um, here at Rodenzo, and we will see you guys next week. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye. Uh, we are actually shooting this, and we don't know what the f is going to happen. I remember my first time shooting a video. Hey, what's up? I'll wait. Hey, Rob. Can you check Slack so Sterling doesn't call me again? He's like, yeah, you, you've been looking pretty pale in the videos lately. You're pretty windy. Yeah. <coughs> data, data. Data. What do you say? I'm really embarrassed, but I say both. I think I say it's, both, too. Tomato, tomato. Yep. <laughs> Tomatoes are gross. So we are introducing ourselves. Yeah, I think we should introduce ourselves. Um, and and, and uh, I never want to hear sacrilege at this table ever again. Which about one? About tomatoes. <laughs> Vile beans. I'm Italian.